comment. We'll offer you three minutes um, and commit directed to the committee as a whole, not just an individual committee member. And everybody signed in and filled out a sheet. All right. I don't and have Mr. Any. Chairman, we'll, we'll also do public safety and administration public comment at this time. So we have three sheets filled out by folks. We'll start with Miss Stacy Hessel, please. State your name and address at the podium, please. Mr. Schumann, could you identify which are they speaking for public safety or admin? I have to do two sets of minutes. Stacy, are you public safety? Public safety, yes, okay. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Stacy Hessel, 10629 Riverside Road, Hayward, Wisconsin. Just um, wanting to thank you for having a special meeting to address and discuss this topic. I think um, we, need, we do need to address issues on retaining employees, whether it's all county, sheriff's department, whatever the case may be. So I'm just thanking you publicly for addressing the issue. Thank you. Anyone else out there want to speak on, yep. on this? Uh, we've got Mr. Tim Hagberg. This will be PTO in, uh, admin. Yes. Administration, state your name and address, sir. Tim Hagberg, uh, 10851 Second Avenue, North Hayward. And yeah, I just wanted to address the committee. Thank you for the opportunity. Just wanted to uh, just mention a couple things about the proposed PTO policy. Um, I personally think it's a great policy, uh, the one that's been presented. Um, I've been a county employee for uh, a little over 20 years, uh, starting in uh, September, so I've been here since 2003, and saw a lot of things, a lot of changes, met a lot of people in the process, and I think uh, it's safe to say for all of us that unexpected things in life happen. Uh, you know, major things can happen, and because of that, it requires all of us as employees and individuals, but speaking as a county employee with the PTO policy, it requires us to be mindful of how we use vacation in the current policy, how we use our vacation and our sick time, that we always have to make that decision. Are we going to use it? Are we going to bank it? Um, and I think that the proposed PTO policy is very beneficial for uh, I think any of us who have tried to be mindful about uh, the fact that unexpected things do come up, and so sometimes you weigh in, are you going to use vacation time, or are you going to use sick time for uh, major things, bank it for major things, maybe use vacation for those minor things. And otherwise, I know that um, having been here 20 years, I know that um, like probably every business, uh, we do have employees that that take uh, sick time for instead of using it for uh, major things. It's like uh, you'll hear people. Some people will go like, "Oh man, I, you know, it's been really stressful. I need to take a mental health day." And I personally believe that's what vacation days are. We should be using those for the mental health days, bank our sick time, and so I believe this new PTO policy is really beneficial for any of us that have banked hours or in my, uh, in, in my own case, I, I have been very fortunate. I've been maxed out at the 110 days banked uh, for a fair number of years now. And, and so the PTO policy, instead of going uh, rewarding people that are using them for mental health days and maybe for minor things that they could be using vacation for, people that are banked, um, you basically, I'm not saying you lose those days because the county's been very generous with the number of days they give, but I believe the new PTO policy really helps because it allows any of us that are banked to be able to get a few more hours every week or every year rather that we Okay, you want to wrap it up, sir? Thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, next we have uh, Linda Zelmer, please. Speaking on administrative, Madam Clerk, PTO. Um, first of all, when I was at the previous discussion at a committee level, um, I'm 
understood that this was going to go back to the employees for further discussion and wouldn't be heard till later, did not even realize I was here for the public safety portion. My concern when I listened at a committee level, having had to manage a lot of employees and also knowing that staff is uh, very uh, limited in some of our departments is the effect on more flexibility in scheduling kind of the mixing of the vacation with the sick pay, because then that leaves your, the rest of your office staff trying to scramble to cover. In, in, in managing uh, a lot of work with a few number of employees, the benefit of, and I don't, have not seen the details, but separating vacation days and requiring scheduling ahead of time, then it allows for making sure that there's other office staff to cover as opposed to a lot of flexibility where people might be able to call in on short notice. I think there's also a benefit to separating vacation from sick pay and that you could require employees to take it within a certain amount of time, a use it or lose it versus a carryover banking of sick time. So if you just go forward with a policy, please consider those things, especially on the workload of the people that have to pick up when people are being flexible about their time off. And then on the public safety matter, um, having had the benefit of training for NIMS and ICS, and I understand a chain of command, and within our sheriff's department, they are represented. Um, this whole policy about take-home vehicles, uh, and I can understand that a supervisor can advocate, just like a citizen, for wanting to advocate for employees, whether it's highway or sheriff or zoning. But I think there is a line where I think those employees need to speak for themselves whether they are going to leave employment of Sawyer County over an issue like that. And I don't think it's fair for somebody else to say that on their behalf, uh, kind of could create a negative image of those employees, um, whether they might not have even said that. Thank you. Thank you. She had to state her name and address. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've got confused. Oh, Linda Zilmer, uh, resident of the village of Birchwood, Edgewater uh, property owner. I got confused because I had two public comments. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else for a public comment? Anybody online, Lynn? Not yet. All right. Then, okay. Chairman. All right. We're going to go on to number seven. Uh, take home vehicle policy. Uh, it's a discussion and possible action items. And I would like to hear all of the pros and cons as much as I can of this. And Sheriff, you want to lead off? I got it. Thank you. You're, rec You're recognized, Mr. Peters. Who's that? Oh, okay. Okay. What, should we have Andy start? He's going to. Yeah, Andy, why don't you start it then? Open this up for us. Yeah. Sorry, Sheriff. So I'll be sure to turn it over to the Sheriff here as okay. soon as I can. <laughs> um, that, thanks for uh, having the special meeting today. I know we discussed this a little bit last week after uh, part of admin about uh, bringing this back. Um, and I guess I, I talked to the chairs about doing this sooner rather than later. Um, if we're going to have this discussion, uh, I didn't see uh, a point in waiting. Um, depending on what the, how the, um, the, I mean, the information we've got about potential employees leaving uh, because of this issue, I um, thought it was best to get it um, addressed and if possible, uh, if any changes are uh, recommended or approved to go to the county board yet this month. So that's, that's why we're here today. I guess I just wanted to start by, I had emailed this out last night and I'll just run through it. It's just a little background information on this topic. Um, so what I uh, emailed out and we'll put it on the screen here is, let me blow it up. Is uh, just, just some general background information on residency requirements and our take home vehicle policy. So really right now, we only have employees in two areas that have take assigned vehicles that they can take home. Um, highway has a couple and the remainder would be deputies within the Sheriff's Department. At least I'm not aware of any other take home assignments. Everybody else leaves their vehicles here. Um, our current policy um, is 
that the sheriff department, sheriff's office deputy employees need to live within 25 miles of the county line. That's a, that's our residency requirement. The only place you can legally have a residency requirement is for law enforcement, firefighters, and EMS. We don't have any firefighters, and we don't have a residency requirement for our EMS. State statute is 15 miles from the jurisdiction line if you have a residency requirement. So we actually go beyond 15 miles um, and allow up to 25. And then the contingency on the vehicles is if an employee does not reside within the county boundaries, the county squad car must remain within the county boundaries. So as we've heard, those vehicles are left um, someplace near the county line. Um, so that's really the only, I mean, it does, we do have commuting uh, for sheriff and highway department employees that talks about the department director and administrator can approve that. Um, and that there is a financial implication that they're taxed for the value of that according to IRS regulations. So really those are the only two things we have in policy that control our take home vehicles. Um, and I guess I'll just go back up to the statute regarding residency. If, we re if you have a residency requirement, you can require them to reside within 15 miles of the jurisdiction boundaries. So you can't, nobody can require them to live within the jurisdiction. There's a the halo of 15 miles that we are exceeding uh, uh, of our own choosing. So those are the policy items. I did also attach here in the back. Um, we did do the research and talk to our insurers because that's the other question that's come up is if we allow employees to have county vehicles outside the county lines. Obviously, when they're outside the county lines, they're not working for us. They have, don't have jurisdiction or, you know, if it's a highway employee, they wouldn't have, those aren't our highways. So what's the impact if they take their vehicle home and they get in an accident or there's an insurance claim or if they're hurt in an accident, the workers' comp cover that? And the, the short answer is it's all covered. I mean, every every claim is reviewed, but workers' comp says it's it's uh, their word is those types of things are commensable. They can be compensated. Now, if the employee is using their county vehicle to, I don't know, drag race down the county road somewhere, that's not they're not doing a work job. Or if they're coming to or from work, that is considered, it's not work time, we're not paying them for that, but they're doing that in order to work for us. So I don't see any uh, significant insurance or workers' comp issues if we were to allow um, county vehicles to go home outside the county line. Um, so that's just the general background. Um, I think now is probably a good time to turn over to the sheriff. He's they've Mr. done more of the legwork on other counties. Mr. Duffy, yes. What are our neighboring counties doing? Um, you guys have that? Yeah, I'll let them answer that. They've done more of the detail work there. And one more, Chairman. Andy, Correct. what is the financial impact driving this far outside the county? Are we paying for all that gas and wear and tear on the vehicle then? Yes, we would be. And for the sheriff's deputies, they've estimated the financial impact of that. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Sheriff. Okay. I'll start off. I want to take a minute and just talk about a little bit of the history of take-home squads with our sheriff's department. Um, started about 45, 50 years ago. Rural um, counties had take-home squads because we and other counties did not have, and they talk about the comparables. Comparables come up a lot from county to county, so that's why I'm including other counties as well. They did not have 24-hour coverage, so the purpose of a take-home squad started so that you could be called out in the middle of the night or otherwise and could tend to those calls for service, however, wherever, throughout the county. Um, up until... About 20 years ago, state statute mandated that all deputies lived within the county. So this has just been an issue in the last 20 years or so. Prior to that, and I'm estimating 20 years by state statute, you had to live within the county. There are still counties that do not have take-home squads. There's several counties that have just implemented take-home squads in the last several years we have six deputies currently we had five up until sunday our new hire currently lives out of county and uh, all six um, of our current deputies that live out of county um, were well aware of what the policy is at the time they were hired 
benefits versus concerns. I want to take a couple minutes and talk about that. I'll start off with the benefits of allowing out-of-county take-home squads. You are going to benefit five or six people. And you may attract more applicants in the future. Going over the concerns. We are going to have to talk about and set a limit when it comes to comparables of other counties. We found on the counties that responded, there are several that allow up to 20 miles. There is one that allowed up to 25 miles. One county was 30 miles from the county seat, which when you look at that county is probably 15 miles, probably not anywhere where it's 20 from the county line within that county. Most counties are 15 mile limit from the county line. Sure. You are going Sheriff, to I got a question real quick. Sure. Is the state statute where they must live within the county, is that still in effect? No. That was changed about 20, 20 some years ago. Okay. Got it. Dale, you want to speak quickly? Sorry, we missed you in our own first time. Yeah, I'm, I was a little confused. It's as it stands now, it's within 25 miles. That's the county rule. The residency requirement is for sheriff's deputies. They have to live within 25 miles. I thought, but residency requirements, I didn't know we still had them. I thought we got rid of them a long time ago. I mean. Yeah, as far, I, I don't know how long that's been in place, but the current policy is they have to live within 25 miles of the county line, and that's just deputies. Okay, and what what was the 50-mile limit? 15 is the state. 15. Yeah, the, the statute that prohibits local governments from having residency requirements, except for firefighters, law enforcement, and EMS. And if you have a residency requirement, um, you have to allow them to live within 15 miles of the jurisdiction. How does that jive with what we have? We're actually exceeding that. So we allow 25. So it is possible to exceed what the county said, what the state says. Yes. We just can't go less than 15 miles. Okay. That's. And the current. If if you have a residency requirement, you don't have to have okay. a residency requirement. And currently the deputies, the six now that we're talking about, knew what the rules were when they were hired. Nothing has changed since that higher date correct and this this is good discussion today to talk about the pros and cons of this issue um this is something that has been brought up from time to time so and just just so you dale and everybody else is clear currently we do not allow what per county policy for deputies to drive their squad home if they live outside the county we have extended their ability to park the squad near the county line, either somewhere where it's reasonably safe on government property, a town, or if they know somebody personally and get permission to park the squad there. So the squad is safer, believed to be safe there. And that seems what, to be that seems to be working well. It it has worked and, and we haven't had any issues as far as any vehicles getting burglarized or otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, one of the added concerns, and I just want to go through this because we know these are things that our sheriff's office and administration leadership is going to deal with, as well as county board members are going to deal with. Um, you are going to deal with some public concerns with that county squad traveling out of county. I know Chairman Buckholz probably remembers when Helen Dennis really questioned Nate Dunstan over the ambulance. Very similar issue. You deal with that public perception and they're gonna bring it forward. 
I hosted a Badger State Sheriff's Conference here last Thursday and Friday. The sheriffs get together and have a round table. Without question, retention for law enforcement, as well as all the services, are huge in every county. 100% of our discussion talking about retention was all about wages. And the state has really raised the wages with prison guards and the state patrol, and, and wages have become a huge issue. If you approve the out-of-county take-home squads, we went through an estimated based on the increased miles because four of the current deputies where they reside are going to be about 10,000 miles a year just traveling with the squad for their take-home. So taking into consideration maintaining our current squad rotation when we have to purchase new squads as well as fuel and uh, based on our insurance experience the increased car crashes it's going to be over forty thousand dollars increased cost to expand to out of county travel year. per year that is with our six currently that's not if this promotes other people to move out of county and that number expands. Go ahead, Mr. Beef. I have a question. Why would we um, allow those that live out of county to take their squad to that limit then? Um, what benefit is that? Because they're not quickly responding to anything because they got to go to find their vehicle, start that up, and then leave. It, to me, that seems like then they should just leave them at home or leave them at work. I, I guess I don't understand the justification in that. You mean with letting them keep the vehicle? Well, we have some that live down by Rice Lake, so they're able to park it in Birchwood, so it saves them. They only have to drive their personal vehicle half the distance to the county line. Uh, yeah, I understand that, but it's of no benefit to the county then at all to have them drive it to Birchwood because they're still way far away. So to me, it seems like that issue is is kind of concerning too. So that vehicle should probably stay at the sheriff's department then instead of putting all those miles back and forth if that's the issue. Maybe the sheriff can jump in, but one, one advantage, or I would say it's yeah. an advantage, but when they get into their squad in Birchwood, they're on duty. So they don't necessarily have to come to Hayward to start their shift. They can start in Birchwood and then... I guess they can be assigned from there even. They don't, may not get to the office up here until whenever it comes into their day. It, 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 it is a huge advantage to them because it reduces their personal miles and it does benefit the agency as well because when they check on a Birchwood just like they would at their residence, being the closest place where they can safely park the squad and start their tour duty. So by doing that, we felt it was a win-win for both the employee and the sheriff's office and, and the county. Additionally, I, you know, I think, I think there's a feeling that the whole sheriff's office is in favor of this employee wise. I want to share a discussion that I had one of our senior deputies talk to me Friday, hearing through the agency. This is a huge talk right now with the talk about out of county squads. He asked me under the current policy, we have a current policy that we cannot use government property vehicles for personal use. And I acknowledged that is true. He said, if we are able, if we live outside the county and we're able to take our squad home, are we using the vehicle for personal use? I smiled. It was tough for me to respond to that fairly. He said, I built my home in Sawyer County. 
My kids attend school in the Hayward School District. I pay taxes in Sawyer County. If you allow them, are you treating them different than those of us who follow the policy, the current policy? How many deputies do you currently have? We have 17 patrol deputies. One of them, 16 on patrol. One of them's a truancy officer. Okay. And five or six of these are affected by this? No, more than that, because we have 17 road deputies. We have three detectives. And we have three administrators with take-home squads. Just letting you know, Mr. Helwig is now in the meeting. Okay, thank you, Lynn. So if this policy does change, there are going to be issues that arise, as I mentioned earlier with us and the county board, including deputies wanting to be compensated equally. Are they going to be able to use those who live in county, are they going to be able to use their squads for personal use otherwise? And we, we've had some policies in existence, clothing allowance and other policies. As soon as you open that door for change, you know when enough's enough after just a little bit more. Some added things here. If you approve this, what is the message you are sending to the current deputies that are following the policy? Are you promoting more deputies to move out of county? I know it's been talked about. It's tough to get housing in Sawyer County. It's tough to rent. You know, with that same theory, are you promoting them to sell that high-priced house and buy a house out of county, being able to take their squad home? And regarding the deputies that are potentially talking about leaving, if you change this policy, does that guarantee that they're not going to leave anyway? When it comes to re regarding retention, morale, culture, and climate, the biggest thing with our staff that's consistent that all of our deputies talk about is pay their wages and uh, if if we have that forty thousand dollars that's unbudgeted to grant this policy change my suggestion to benefit all employees equally is take that forty thousand dollars and apply towards a pay raise for all of them and then they all benefit equally Sure. Have you or Lieutenant Rapinski or Chief Deputy heard of anything? These people come to you and tell you that they were leaving if this policy is not looked at or, or approved. Has anybody come to you? I mean, it should be going to the proper places. That It's just I don't think. We're just hearing it through the grapevine here on different things. Um, I don't know where it's coming from or who they're talking to, but um, do you guys hear this? I had a call last week from one deputy, and he inquired about this policy change, and he expressed some concern because he lives in the Wascott area, and his wife works in Superior, and he has worked for us nine years. And he is considering, he didn't say whether he was going to leave for sure or not, but he did express concern about his added travel that he has to do because of this current policy. That is all I have heard directly to me from any of the six employees that live out of county.
Go ahead, Mr. Schleter. What you just said was that he is burdened by the amount of miles he has to read to drive now, and this would increase it? It would not increase his miles of travel, but it would be on the county's expense, not his, to travel to work. Okay. Mr. Sapinski? So this goes up to 25 miles out of the, or uh, out of Sawyer County, correct? Residency. Okay, residency wise. Would that cover those six employees that you have to where they reside at currently? What's that? If we change this to 25, to allowing them to take those squads home 25 miles outside of the Sawyer County, would that cover all six of those employees? I or do, do believe we, they're, they're touching or close to, we have not confirmed the mileage. I do believe they're within 25 miles. It's With, hard because after 10 years, don't employees of the county, can't they get some kind of benefits package or something? If they leave 10 years, don't they get like half their sick time or something paid out? So I know like you brought up, Ron, that a few of them, you know, the grapevine, they're talking about leaving. Well, I hear it, of course. Um, and I brought it up earlier or last week, I should say, that Washburn County's hiring that we were behind the times because their job posting ended on the 15th. And what I've been hearing from the Sawyer County employees is that we have a few on those lists. All of them have 10 years in, so they can take that benefits package from us and leave and go somewhere else where they can have that take-home squad. So, and that's a county that if you are a deputy there, you can live outside of Washburn County and uh, have your, have your take-home squad. So my, my issue was that I wasn't really willing to let 30 years of experience from Sawyer County up and leave because there are um, other agencies hiring right now. So I was certainly in favor of having these guys ha take these squads home and whatever, whatever benefits uh, we can offer to employees across uh, all the Sawyer County departments, I guess, to keep these people here. But um, if that 25 miles does cover all six of those employees, I would be um, – in favor of it, I guess, because I don't want to lose the experience that we currently have on the road. The, the well, other thing, go ahead, share. Go ahead. The other thing I'll mention is the five counties that surround Sawyer. Washburn has 15 mile limit outside of the county. Rusk has 25 or 20 mile limit outside their county. Price does not allow out of county. Ashland does not allow out of county and Bayfield does not allow out of county. Bayfield just got rid of their, they used to, you had to reside in a zone within the county so you could better serve that county. They just got rid of that, and now they have, you can live anywhere in the county. So one of my questions would be then, you know, I'm not against deputies taking this home, other than the fact, Sheriff, what you said, and I didn't think about that, is our, 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 our other deputies that we have right now that are talking to you, what are they going to get? Well, I believe if we do that for these out-of-county deputies, somehow we should come up something with these people that built their homes in Sawyer County to stay in Sawyer County. I didn't, when I was thinking about this, I, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that part of it. But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if Russ County or them other counties, they don't offer them other deputies anything. That are you aware of anything, or you guys, or no, Andy, or okay. Go ahead, uh, Sheriff, you estimated the forty thousand dollar budget impact, correct? So you had some idea of the mileage that's out there right now right, for these five or six deputies? That's how you got to that number? Yes. Okay. It's, it, it's about forty five to 50,000 miles a year, additional out of county for all, for all of them, for all. per year. Yep. 
Thank you. Ron, go ahead. Um, past year, whatever, a little over a year, I was working in Mindong, and both of us, full-time employees, had our take-home squads. I currently take my vehicle home from the city of Hayward Police Department. Um, and we also got to factor in that I think four of the six employees that the sheriff's office has is all in the a joint SWAT team that we have with Burnett. Is it Burnett, Washburn, and Sawyer? So um, a perfect example for us serving the public and keeping those safe is one of the deputies that lives in the Wascott area is on that SWAT team. Um, he drove past the scene of the SWAT call, the house with the gunman in it or whatever, where the violence was occurring, had to come back to Sawyer County Sheriff's Office, grab his squad, and then respond back to that, that address. So, you know, it kind of puts him in a hard spot, too, and is increasing the time for deputies to respond to these violent calls to ensure the safety of the public, which should be our biggest, uh, should be our biggest concern, I guess. So just another thing to factor in, I guess, is that maybe the, just that maybe some people on the SWAT team can have their take home squads if we can't come to agreement with all um, all deputies in the agency. Both like, uh, of these people are on the SWAT team, right there. I think it's four out of six, correct? Four out of six, yes. Yeah. The the other the other thing I'll mention too is you know just staying focused on the greater good and serving our community. Um, when our SWAT team members live so far outside of the county line, it takes them longer to respond. We had a SWAT call down in Radisson, and it took longer for our own SWAT team to get there than it did when we called for mutual aid from Baron Rusk in the totality of the time because of the distance our deputies on the SWAT team live outside the county. Go ahead, Mr. I, I just have a question on that because that seems like a in-house administrative thing as, as to who's on that SWAT team then. Is that something that that they choose to be on the SWAT team or that they are appointed to a SWAT team? That process works with administration as well as the SWAT team. Um, administration approves it. SWAT, the SWAT team members are selected that's a tight team they're in a critical situation there has to be that bond of trust within the team so if they're not if the the team, current team members have a concern with another member coming in they're not going to end up being on the SWAT team and then administration has to approve it as well where they live is not taken into consideration Mr. Helwig or Mr. Peters, do you got anything you want to add to this? Hello. Hello. Well, this is a seems to be another issue where we where we see the evidence of difficulties of county lines. Uh, we have needs in all of these counties for emergency services of a variety of sorts. We don't have sufficient staff in any county to be able to cover this. It seems like we need to start thinking outside of county line boxes, but that doesn't sometimes go too well with within county taxpayers. But we do have to look at what is going to be the best way of providing for ambulance, for police, or for sheriffs, uh, law enforcement, and, and other kinds of services, because we're just, it seems like we're almost digging ourselves into another hole. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Schleter, do you want to say I something? do have some thoughts on this, uh, Mr. Chair. Hang on, Mr. Schleter is going to comment. Uh, just a couple questions. Is this an all or nothing deal? They want to get everything they're asking for, or is there room for negotiation? 
I guess that's an interesting question, but I, it'd be up to the board to decide what, what you change and how you change it, whether you, you know, expand out of the county, whether you go to five miles or 10 miles or 15 miles or more, um, different counties do it differently. And, and I'll, I'll share this. I'm following county policy currently, and my I have full intentions to follow county policy. If you change that policy, I will follow the policy that you change. I know there's no doubt in anybody's mind that you would continue to follow policy, Doug. But in, in way of a possible compromise, deputies who live inside Sawyer County don't always just drive two miles and you're at the courthouse or sheriff's department. Some of them have some long rides too, even though they are still in the county. Yeah. Um, we're not going, we don't compensate them for that ride that they take. You can be 20 miles away from here, a deputy, and still be in Sawyer County. That person doesn't get, uh, or hypothetical deputy, doesn't get paid for the gas that he's using. Uh, why should people who live out of country, county, uh, get such a big boost on mileage payments? Uh, maybe there's a happy medium somewhere between the two. What's the average mile that average mileage that a deputy living in Sawyer County pays for their gas in a year? And whatever that uh, equal part is. Well, well, I think, you know, just so that we're on the same page of understanding, Dale, is when you have a deputy that lives in county, and they come to court or, or for whatever those added services are, mm -hmm. they check on duty as always from their home, mm -hmm. their residence. And then being they live in Sawyer County, they have full, full jurisdiction. If there's a critical incident or something else comes up, they assist with that while they check on. And then they deal with their other duties or responsibilities that they're doing. If it's outside of the scheduled work shift that they're, they're on, and then when they go home, so they have full jurisdiction in that squad when they reside in the county. Does that make sense? Does that clarify? Well, I, not what I'm asking for or what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the deputy who takes his, who lives within Sawyer County, still lives 20 miles away from the sheriff's department, and he drives back and forth in his own vehicle every day. And he doesn't get any recompense for the number of miles he's driving. But maybe that's, uh, you figure out what the difference is uh, and come up with a number that. Uh, are you are you talking about dispatchers and jailers? Talking about sheriff's deputies. Okay. That's what we're talking about, isn't it? Yes. Okay, are there short sheriff's department's deputies who live within Sawyer County having long drives to their places, to the Sheriff's Department every day and long drives back. And I assume there are some in that situation and they take their own car back and forth. Maybe it's 20 miles up, and it goes down, there's 40 miles. That's substantial. Over 75% of the staff that deputies and admin that have squads live within the county. But the other thing is they don't have to come to the sheriff's office when they're working patrol. They can do patrol right from their squad with mobile data, computers, and everything. So they check on duty, and, and they're on patrol as soon as they check on from their house. Well, I I, I think I can- Hang on, man. Mr. Schluter's not done, Mark. Yeah, I think I can jump in on what Mr. Schluter's saying though. Might be able to kind of 
I think what Dale is trying to say, and I don't think the sheriff is catching on, is that if somebody lives a 25 miles from, say, Hayward, where the sheriff's department is, and they're still in the county, is that what you're trying to say, Dale, that they live in the county but they're 25 miles away? If, well, that was we, must my... have, we must have deputies that are in that situation. Yeah, I they think live it's... within the county, but they're 25 miles away because this county is very big. As to Mr. Huh? Cedar's comment, I think just so you know that like deputies that live 25 miles away, like we have some that live in Coudere, everybody right. that all the deputies that live in the county have a take home squad that they take home with them. They don't use their personal vehicle for any county business so they're not coming in to go to court in a personal vehicle they're always in a, a county squad okay well if that person, well, that person these people yeah. we're talking about live across the line and they're 25 miles away from the sheriff's department isn't that the same thing as if they live in the county 25 miles away no well i know what they're crossing the line but they're still 25 miles away from the sheriff's department. I think that, I think that's kind of what they we're talking about. about the county line. I understand that. What I'm saying. Well, you're is, talking sheriff's office. That's different department. So keep yeah. going. Go ahead, Mr. Elwood. What I'm saying, these individuals. You know, and, and I think a, people, a lot of people wrapped up about the, thought, the idea or whatever that, okay, well, Joe gets this. Why don't I get that too? Well, you know, everybody can't have the. It, it's not the same across the board. It's like, well, the sheriff gets this. Why don't I get paid that too? I'm, not sorry about that. I'm squeaking and all that. Uh, you know, everybody seems to think that they got to be compensated exactly the same. Um, it, we, you got to me. You got to look at the big picture, or as like I think a lot of people have said here that I have have had a hard time hearing some of them. Uh, but uh, I don't. Maybe I'm saying the same thing. But <clears throat> the thing is, we don't want to lose these people or possibly not get people in the future because they may live across the county line and they may live five miles over the line. The mileage thing it seems to be an issue here, whether it's five or 25 miles over the county line. I don't know. I, 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 I just think it's some things are okay. Are you done, Mr. Alec? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Weaver. So again, I, I think that the underlying issue here is that Sawyer County wages are are, are lower and it's not a, a place that people are even looking. I mean the EMTs, the the police, we we've done these raises, but I I would ask Marshall, are, are we competitive enough to, to draw people in or, or have people from Sawyer County not leaving to go to other county departments? Um, and and that, that might be the underlying issue um, that we need to really look at and how do we, how do we compensate them? The issue with, with nobody being able to afford a home in Sawyer County is probably because of the unregulated Airbnbs that everybody is keeping in their family instead of selling to other families and, and artificially raising up the, the value of some of this real estate. So there's a lot of things that we could do to, to make the, make, make these uh, changes and help uh, get these, these wages better for the emergency um, personnel. The, uh, the dollar amount that these guys are getting paid and all the hours that they got to work and be on call and things like that, it, we're not, we're not doing them a benefit by paying them such low wages. And I, I don't think that, uh, that a car here and there is, is really going to fix that issue. And we're going to keep shooting ourselves in the foot until we really address it and do a, a better study of that. Um, right now, as it is though, six deputies, and we're not going to get six to come run into Sawyer County for the low wages. 
I, I really I really don't see this as, as as something that that we'd want to to lose deputies over or, or any staff in the county. So it's just my point of view. Sheriff, Sheriff and Andy, I really appreciate you getting me that financial information on the impact of this. Andy, do you agree that that's fairly accurate? Mm -hmm. Um, so Sheriff, do you have, if we were to amend and improve this policy amended, and it's going to cost us that much more money, do you have that money in your budget to offset this mileage and car replacement? And do you have some money you could put at this in your budget? Well, we have our annual line item budget in this 40,000 was not added to the approved budget here in November. Because, you know, we went, we recently just had negotiations, right, with the union, and we agreed on a significant raise, correct? And we addressed all their issues, and this was on the table initially, correct? And then both sides decided that's really not important. Wages were more important. And you've said that multiple times here, correct? All the deputies talk about wages competitively to other counties, and Washburn does pay less than us, or pays more than us. We are less than Washburn for pay. Thank you, Chairman. Go ahead, Ms. Hassel. I just want to speak as a supervisor at this time and say that the reason that I brought this forward is because we all bring as supervisors issue to the table that concern our county. Our, our focus is uh, to be financially stable, but to keep our county residents safe. So that is why the issue is brought to the table. The thing that hasn't been addressed today is the IRS liability. The deputies would have to pay per day to take that vehicle home. So there would be a counterbalance, correct, Andy? Yes. Yeah, if you could address that the deputies would have to pay that. So there is not just the $40,000, there would be less because they would have to pay to drive those home. Yeah, actually, the, they don't get a mileage rate. It's, the, they're, it's a commuting rate within the IRS, so they're taxed for the value of it. And on average, it's roughly $3 a day for take-home vehicles for commuting for personal use. Ron, go ahead. Would administratively, would we be able to charge them for the mileage from the county line to their residents? Yes. I mean, there's nothing that would prohibit that. Uh, that's something I've mentioned as a potential alternative is that um, you know, from the county line, you could implement a mileage rate or um, you know, anything beyond a certain amount of miles. Would be at a, you, you have that ability. That's not what I would say standard. I mean, um, and I was just going to add like the discussion a while ago about, you know, if you offer this benefit to these employees, do you want to do something for us to make up for it? Right. I'm not going to say we couldn't do that, but I would say that'd be very interesting to pursue that or interesting, maybe in the difficult side, because we we're under a contract with our deputies, a union contract. And so we'd have to reopen the contract essentially to negotiate that, I believe. And we already have a policy stating we cannot use a county vehicle for personal use. Correct. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not aware of any other counties, not that there aren't, that, that it have introduced a mileage rate, like a payback for use. Can I just clean up a couple other things? Yes, go ahead. Um, so yeah, union contract. Oh, just, yeah, there was a question about negotiation, like you know, would they accept something less? So I just want to emphasize, we're not really negotiating. We don't have a official request or a, an effort by employees to bring this to us. It's kind of come through, information's come in through the walls, so to speak, that this is a potential issue. So that's why it's brought forward. Um, we haven't really talked about it, but when we put this on the agenda, we listed it as take-home policy for county vehicles. Because like I said, it's just not the sheriff's department that has take-home vehicles. It would be potentially consideration to if we applied it, I think we want to do it universally. So there are a couple of highway uh, vehicles that would be the same. And roughly just, you know, the counties that allow take-home squads generally um, allow take the assigned vehicles in the highway department to be taken across county lines as well with the same restrictions. I think even there's a couple of counties that don't let squads go home, but let a couple of highway vehicles. Um, and they can consider those on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, Procedurally, just if we get to the point here, 
you know, preferably it'd be nice to have a consensus between the two committees, but we brought in an admin and public safety because public safety oversees the sheriff where this is the biggest issue. Admin oversees HR and that's where these policies lie is in our employee manual. So that's why we have two committees to talk about it. And then the only other thing I wanted to point out that, you know, I see a lot of pros and cons with this, but one thing that's struck me as a little different here than the other counties we've talked to that have this policy like the sheriff talked about the counties that do have take-home squads outside the county and those that don't. The ones I'm aware of that do, we're talking like Russ County has two people. Barron, I think, is going to have one. Burnett has one or two deputies. I don't know Washburn. But here we're talking five to six, and, you know, fairly substantial portion of, of the force. Um, and then you can't really say it just be those six. You're opening the door then to current and you know, future deputies as well. So I think... That was struck me as a, something to consider. I mean, percentage of the force that'd be outside the county is appears to be significantly higher than other counties that allow this. And I don't have an explanation for that. That's just the information we have. All right, Mr. Duffy, start with Mr. Well, you know, it seems listening to the sheriff that wages are the breed of the problem. Unless we address that issue, it's we're not going to be able to retain these officers. I mean, it's a matter of they don't get paid enough, they're going to be leaving. And we're going to have to go out further and further and further to bring in people to, to, to meet our needs. I mean, I think we have to go back to the issue of do we pay these guys enough and let's raise the salary. Let's keep them. And, and if we do that, I think we're going to find it easier to keep officers in the county. I, I don't know. Sheriff, what's your personal recommendation? What would you like to, the, the, the board to do? Well, that's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> I I support what you guys decide on the policy change. But like I mentioned earlier, I, I believe in fair, treating everybody equally. And if you invest the same dollar amount in pay raises versus out-of-county squads that benefit a few or less than half by far, it's without question more fair. And I think it's going to, you know, pay is huge in this day and age across the board and especially in law enforcement. And I, I do think that is the biggest issue that we hear with our staff and that I hear with my colleagues, fellow sheriffs, is that competition, employees leaving one workplace to another in law enforcement because of pay. Go ahead. Uh, well said, well said, Sheriff. But if everybody got, I you know, we do a raise, bring everybody up. This issue still exists. It's not going to go away just because you get a raise, because everybody else got a raise, and because you're driving more, you're not getting the benefit as much as those who live inside the county. Now, if possibly, it's just say, well, life isn't always fair. If you want to have the benefit of a, a short drive, move to Sawyer County. But if you like it where you're at, you're going to pay the price for living where you want to live. And that's never going to change. But my point is, this issue will not go away just because of a pay raise. We're going to have to figure something out and push it aside for another day or another month or another year, or after I'm retired, maybe we'll be okay. <laughs> but pushing it off ain't going to help. Go ahead, Marshall. Does this affect anybody else or just the sheriff's office? So, like a road commissioner or the forester? Highway or... commissioner. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they also get called out in the middle of the night to go respond on clear limbs and stuff. So instead of them going to the highway shop, they'd go be able to go right to the scene to they, open the, up the roadways, right? Those two employees do have take-home vehicles, but both uh, both newer now employees, both, both reside outside the county. So they leave their vehicles at, one leaves it at the Radisson shop and the other leaves it at Stone Lake. So if we go with this, they'd be able to take those two vehicles out to the residences? Outside of the county, correct? I would believe that that's the direction that's the, yeah. Okay. It'd be all how the motions formed and the policies change, but could okay. be done, yes. Go ahead, Ms. Hassel. 
Just a quick question. So if pay was the issue, then why wasn't that fought for during the negotiations with the union? So that, that's a non-issue right now. The policy is the issue because it will affect more than just the, the uh, sheriff's department. So if pay was where we wanted to go, I think that that would have been a time at the negotiations. This is a policy question for all county, you know, the highway department, not just a deputy um, issue. I just wanted to be clear on that. All right. I don't know. Uh, you go, sure. uh, Chief Deputy, you got anything you want to add? No. All right. Okay. The thing with the sheriff, the, the equity thing, I mean, you got to be equal to everybody. Can't hear him. Okay. Go ahead, Mark. I was saying I can't hear the chief. Can't hear the chief. Mark, I was just saying I was leaning with the sheriff towards the equity. Um, you're giving, you know, a third of the employees something that you're not giving the other two thirds. Well, I'm kind of, you know, I like I say, I've had a hard time hearing some of this stuff. Um, could you expound on that, Chief? First, the uh, two thirds and one third. What are you giving the uh, two thirds? Well, you have one third of our employees that live out of county and, and two thirds, you know, maintain residence within the county. I don't I don't see it being fair that you're gonna benefit six employees and not benefit the other group. So they're benefiting because they get to drive their vehicles farther home. Great. Great. I mean, we're talking a lot of miles here. Correct. Now, my thing I was going to bring up here when I, I, I was rudely interrupted was six people. My th my question here, or maybe thought, is that it seems like the other counties are only one or two. Doesn't it seem odd to everybody here that Sawyer County has six people? that want to work for Sawyer County that live out of the county. That sounds pretty good to me that there's a, a fact that six people want to work for our county even though they live out of the county. So we're doing something good within the county to have that many people live outside the county that want to work for the county. Because we've done what I'm saying at the same time you catch what I'm saying, guys? Well, I do. Um, here's what I want to throw out there. Is this something that we have to act on today, Andy? Uh, can't we take another look at this to make everybody equal, even, you know, the ones that want to take home the county squads and the county commissioner and – the rest of the sheriff's uh, deputies. Can't we take a look at this and then and have it on the next public safety meeting in January? Yeah, there's no, um, no, no requirement or no that you have to make a decision today. Um, the purpose of having a t discussion today was to what Mr. Savitsky was talking about. I believe that there were positions nearby that we were. Uh, informed or of the belief that our employees were applying for so that was that was the reason for the meeting but there is no um, other reason to have to make a decision if you're not comfortable or want us to do additional work we can certainly do that additional information for you mr kinsley thank you as it was stated wages are off the table because that was done negotiation so it is just a policy so if these people are 25 miles away or less and they wanted to take that vehicle home, would they not have to compensate the county whatever rate we set for that vehicle? Yeah. So say I'm 20 miles out of county and I'm gonna take the vehicle home, I have to pay the county what? To be able to take that vehicle ultimately it would be our decision but i would tell you that like the other counties that have that the employees don't pay 
any mileage rate to the county for taking it home. But they would have the option to leave the vehicle where they're presently leaving it at, whatever that is, or take it home to compensate the county for it. That's an option we would have to make that a policy to, to implement a mileage rate that they would reimburse the county for right. for the out of county. And yeah. The only the only thing if we if we just let them use the vehicle and take it home, then they are taxed at the the tax for the value by the IRS, which I said is roughly three dollars a day is the tax implication. I think if they pay the mileage rate, then they're not taxed for the there's no IRS rate because they're actually paying to use it then. So if there was a rate figured out for mileage, wear and tear on a vehicle, I mean, that would be something that we could certainly look at. Right. And then the deputy would be paying it and not the taxpayers. Right. So here, I'm going to turn it over to the committee and let them decide what they want to do. If they want to approve this, and, and you can put stipulations on it, as we talked about, or... <clears throat> not approve it. So, Mr. Peters, Mr. Helwig, Mr. Weaver, and Mr. Savitsky, what is your preference? I'd make a motion to approve it. As drafted at 25 miles outside of the county line. The current, that's what, no, this is what we're changing it to, correct? No, the current, the, excuse me, the current policy is that Deputies can live within 25 miles of the county line. They cannot take their squads outside of the county. I'd like to change it so they can take the squads outside of the county. Okay. So they can. Correct. Okay. You're saying they can't? Can. Can? They can, yeah. Can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. they can. All right. 25 miles. Up to 25, Up to 25 miles. miles. Are you want to if... put a, a stipulation on there? Uh, I, think, I think we should. I think that... But that's should, just me. I'm not telling you guys what you have to do. I think we should verify with those six employees that they are going to fall within those 25 miles. And, you know, when they clock in for service, they are in the county when they clock in. So they leave their house. It takes them 10 minutes to get to the county line. Then we're still getting their full shift out of them. And whatever else, you know, sheriff's office administration is going to know what's best for for them i guess and for their employees but uh, i just know that's how washburn county did it when i worked in my dog i thought that was fair and within that motion then mr savitsky you're moving it on to administration for consideration and eventually the county board is that what you're saying sure okay okay we have a motion do we have a second i'll second that motion ed peters Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Savitsky to approve the out of county squads being able to take them home. And a second by Mr. Peters. Any more discussion? Yeah. Are we are you putting any not just the squads for that highway commissioner too, I, correct? Or he's involved with this as well. That's that's be at your I mean, if that's what you want in the motion, I would make that, a, that don't have to go to public works. It'd be going to you guys. Huh? Yeah. yeah, so that, that would have to go to public works for the commissioner and the new highway. Uh... All right. Wouldn't that policy cover all? I have something to say. Well, the, hang on, Mark. The, the current policy only is specific to sheriff's <laughs> office deputies. We actually don't have a policy in here that says anything about highway. So why wouldn't the commissioner be able to take his car home? It's a good question. Because if there's nothing in there, he should he, he should be able to take his county car home with him. He probably wants to be respectful of expenditures. Well, that that's good. I mean, that, and that's what I mean. But I'm saying if it's not in the policy, right. then he should be able to take it home. You know, when we pulled the policy, I was interested to find that nothing would, I mean, it, there is a commuting requirement for sheriff and highway department employees, but that's at the discretion of the department director and the county administrator. There's no no criteria like there is for sheriff's deputy employees. My understanding, though, for the last year and a half was that the, they followed that same policy of not taking the highway vehicles home. I think Mr. Kinsley set the best, though. What's 
he wants to be respectful of the committee and bring it to them. Well, that's fine. So, Mark, Mr. Allen, go ahead. Well, I, as part of the discussion here, I was going to say that I do not want a motion at this time. I think that we should take it back to our respective uh, committees, as in the administrative committee, the, the two committees that are here today, uh, discuss it and maybe have another meeting in the future. But having today about the about this, I just don't think we should make this this, this decision today. Uh, I think there is more discussion to be had on this. Um, you know, I don't know. I didn't hear what Mr. Kinsley said about what the commissioner on why the commissioner is able to take his vehicle home uh, as part. The claim is the sheriff's able to. Well, the commissioners, I'm not going to keep shooting out there with this, but the commissioners doesn't have it in the policy. I so we have a motion and a second on the floor. Go ahead, Lynn. Sorry. Can I read what I have? Because I'm not yes, quite I want, sure I'm I just have to say that. <laughs> okay. I have a motion was made by Mr. Savitsky to change the current policy to allow Sorry, I had a pop up. I cannot see it. To allow deputies to take the county squad home if they live within 25 miles of the county line, seconded by Mr. Peters and forwarded to the administration committee. Is there okay, something so missing in that? I I would like to see, and I, I don't want to tell the, the committee what to do, but I'd like to see some stipends put on that. So that these out of county deputies are not getting to take that car home free of charge. They have to should be able to pay some. I'm not against them taking it home, but they should have to pay some kind of a fee back to the county to take that squad home. I'm sorry, but isn't that a wage issue then? Because then they're paying. They're not getting their full their full wage, and now you're talking the same thing that everybody else has been talking about here. You know, you know we got to make sure we pay good wage to keep these people, but then you're cutting out their wage by make by in a sense. Uh, Mark, I can't really hear what you're saying. Um, Doug, or sorry, Sheriff, uh, question for you: Do you know if any other um, sheriff's offices put a stipend on their deputies when they live outside of the jurisdiction. Do they have to pay anything back when they do take those vehicles home? I'm, I'm not aware of any. I think one of the things that you run into, too, is the clerical side of it, who keeps track of it, and, and that adds to that side of it. May I make a comment? So, Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters? I second this motion to have this discussion, okay. but the discussion seems to be going in circles, and I therefore I would recommend that we vote, that we do not vote this, vote for this particular motion at this time. Thank you. Thank you. We have to do it. Okay. If there's no more discussion, Lynn, we want us to do a roll call vote with the thing. The chairman, excuse me. Go point ahead. Of, point of order. I think Mr. Peters is retracting his second. Is that true, sir? No, no I am not. No, oh, I am okay. not. I'm sorry. He essentially That's is calling okay. the question, I think. Oh, okay. No. I think he's, yeah, I don't want to restate what he said, but it, yeah, he was saying that you go to a vote, and I think he said how he felt you should vote. So, Lynn, there's no stipulations being put on that, right? I do not have any stipulations on it. Okay. So, roll call vote. Roll call vote. Tweet. Oh, wait. This I got to get to the other. Public safety. Yeah. Public safety. I've got to get public to the safety. other set of minutes. Mr. Buckholtz? No. Mr. Peters? No. Mr. Helwig? No. Mr. Weaver? Yes. Mr. Savitsky? 
Yes. The motion is two to three. Two yes, three no. Motion fail. Motion fail. Okay. So to clarify that the highway department can bring their vehicles home, but the deputies can't. Under the policy. Currently under the power policy, yes. All right. If there is uh, future agenda items. I would like to recommend that this is on the, the agenda for the January meeting, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Then you want to put that on there for me. Okay. It's on uh, correspondence reports from other conferences and meetings. If not, thank you, everybody. We're adjourned. Okay, thank you. So then we'll move immediately into the administration special meeting. It's 12, 17 p.m., Madam Clerk. Let and we've already taken roll call. We've accepted public comment. Uh, looks like action item number seven is going to be postponed, correct? It was not referred to us. Uh, so we'll go to number eight, proposed PTO policy discussion possible action. Mr. Alvarado. Yeah, this is um, when we when we scheduled when the discussion came up to uh, have the special meeting to take up the take home vehicle policy. The request was to put the PTO item on for consideration. It was discussed last week, admin. There's been no changes to it um, or, or really any communication on it. Um, so it's back on, I believe, for discussion and consideration. Okay, thank you, Andy. And I have been approached by several employees that are in favor of this uh, PTO policy that Mr. Alvarado has presented to us, and they would like it to start at the first of the year in January to continue it through the year. So I ask that that be brought back. We made a motion a week ago stating that they wanted to postpone it for a month, but I thought it was more important, Andy, and how you've uh, gotten behind this and your proposals of doing away with vacation and sick time and just going to PTO. And then it also impressed me with the incentives that might be available for um, directors, that for employees that are doing exceptionally well on their evaluations. So I'm presenting it back to the committee for potential approval, to move to approve this, and that we can initiate it and start it at the first of the year. And of course, this policy then would move to the full county board, and we recommend it going there in two days. Pleasure of the board. And I know I got a few out. Did you hear that, Mr. Schleter? It's the, I'm sorry, sir. It's, uh, I am requesting a motion to um, approve the PTO policy that was presented by Mr. Alvarado, and that it be effective January 1, 2024. So I'm just leaving it to the board now. I know at our last meeting, it was postponed until our January meeting. But I had a number of employees come to me and say, we need this. This is an industry standard. And we'd like it to start the first of the year. So I just bring it to the board with your opinions. So Mr. Duffy or Mr. Kinsley, Mr. Buckholtz, Mr. Schleter. And then it would go to the full county board in two days. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I make a motion to approve the proposed conversion to the PTO. Okay, I got a motion. On the county board. Motion by Mr. Buckholtz. Second, okay, second by Mr. Schleter. And then that would make it effective January 1, 2024, is that correct, Andy? Yes. If approved by the county if board next the week. County board. Okay, is there any further discussion? Mr. Kinsley? Yes, thank you. Mr. Alvarado, the administrator, has this been out to all with the changes that are made and then you made a nice presentation was on attached to the agenda. Thank you. Has that been out to all the department heads? 
Yes. Do you know if we had time for our employees to look it over? Um, yeah, all, all employee. Well, yeah, I'd, all employees uh, had it have had it over a week now. The last the lap since the last update, they had a preliminary copy in November. Then they had the updated changes uh, December tenth. The reason I asked last month, or excuse me, the last Thursday to postpone it for one month, is just I want to make sure that we had a chance for all the employees to see it, so they have a chance to buy it. Obviously, you're always going to have some people against it, and that's with everything in life. I just wanted the majority to be brought up abreast of what the new policy was. Thank you. Now, do you care to comment, HR Rose, or are you good with what Andy said? All employees have seen it? Yes, employees have seen it. Um, I will say by far the majority of employees are in favor of switching to this proposal. It's easier for them to accrue time and bank their time. And um, like I mentioned in our last meeting, it might seem silly, but we've got a lot of employees that follow the rules. And if you know where I'm going to leave sick time for only this purpose, they find out that you know, your coworker is not using it for that purpose, it creates issues. This can be a bad problem. I mean, you've got PTO, you can use it for what you can do. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I have a motion by Mr. Buckholt, second by Mr. Schleter, approving the new PTO policy presented by Mr. Alvarado, effective January 1, 2024. Is there any further discussion? If not, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Mr. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Buckholtz? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Mr. Kinsley? Mr. Schleter? You have a full vote. Okay, motion carries. Future agenda items for admin. Correspondence reports. If nothing, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for attending the special meeting.